to, it, it's, it's hard. It, I'm not gonna even lie, it's pretty hard. But you are strong. See that? You are strong. Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Life with Ifa, and thank you so much for tuning in. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Ifa Afon. I'm a second year med school student at St. George University. And part of this channel is pretty much just creating content that can give other people who are interested at St. George's information on different experiences within each term. I already made a term one video and I'll link that below. And so today I wanna to talk about my experience with term two. Now, just to give a disclosure, in the middle of term two, that when the whole COVID-19 pandemic began and we were evacuated from Grenada. So that really, really, really alters my experience and my opinion on how term two went. So let's get started. Term two is definitely, definitely a lot different than term one. Looking back, I can say that it's definitely more interesting as far as the content. You're really gonna start going more into clinical medicine. Term one is a lot of basic sciences as far as foundations and towards the end you start to branch into more system-based learning and that's exactly what term two is you're gonna have three main modules in term two er module which is first and that's called endocrine and reproduction the second module is going to be digestion and metabolism and the last three modules are going to be the neurology modules so er and reproduction okay i went into this module thinking that it was going to be the easiest of them all and um, it was not, at least for me, it was a really, really big game changer because it was just so much information in such a short amount of time. I think the module's about two and a half or three weeks long and that sounds like a lot but it's it's not a lot because we didn't get the weekend to study so we really had only about I want to say like 10 academic days and so that was a lot of information because not only are you doing reproduction you're also doing endocrinology and that's a lot on its own one of my biggest advices for term two the first exam is to not get behind in the beginning I know for a lot of people if you're starting in January you just came back from break and you want to relax and you're just still not in the mode of school yet How However, you do not want to get behind. The first day of classes, no, scratch that. The day before classes, you want to start studying and prepping because this module goes by so fast and there's so much information that you need to learn and to acquire. And the clinical correlates that you're going to be taught in this term, they're very, very similar. And they can get very confusing if you don't have a specific way to distinguish each of them. This is the module that you really want to start incorporating, studying every single day and making sure you know how to differentiate two different diseases from one another. There's a lot of anatomy in this and you'll see that in the reproduction and with anatomy it's just kind of is what it is. You kind of just have to keep looking at it over and over and over again. You don't want to get too boggled down by learning every single vessel and every single artery but you want to get the grand scheme of things and being able to speak it out to someone oh this goes here, this goes here, this connects to that is a really good way to solidify whether or not you know your anatomy. One of the biggest resources that I wish I would have used during this first exam was my step one book. I wasn't really big on my step one book in term one. I just found it to be a lot of work to go through another resource because there's just so many different resources that you can use. But I really, really wished I had used my step one book going into term two because it would have really given me a lot of mnemonics and different ways that I can use to distinguish things. Like I said, there's a lot of different diseases in the first exam that can get kind of confusing and it's really important that you can distinguish them. The second module is digestion and metabolism. I absolutely loved this module. I think it's taught really, really well. This module seems like a lot at first, and I thought it was gonna be so much to try and memorize all different pathways of digestion, and it can get kind of confusing. I think one of the biggest resources that I can advise people to use for the second exam is to whiteboard. Literally, a good old whiteboard is all you need. I cannot tell you how many pathways you're gonna learn in this module. I mean, there's so many different things, and I think one of the ways that really helped me distinguish this pathway from this and knowing how not to mix up the different like intermediates is writing it over and over and over and over 
and over again. Literally, that's one of the best ways. Also, I use Pixarize. Pixarize is an amazing way to memorize different things visually. It's very similar to Sketchy. However, the videos are a lot shorter and a little bit more engaged. I think that it's a great way to memorize different diseases and it really, really helped me whenever I was trying to think of something and I couldn't remember a specific symptom. And the Pixarize videos remind me of different symptoms that I may not have been able to remember. And that was really, really helpful in the exam. Once again, the step one book is a really great resource to use. I definitely did not use it as much in the DM module, but it was still really good to use whenever I was going back and studying for a BSE. So the third module is comprised in three different exams, exam three, four, and five, and it's all neurology. Now, neurology in itself sounds daunting, and the only thing that really helped me and gave me a foundation was the fact that I was a neuroscience major in undergrad. So I kind of had an upper hand with the terminology and learning different parts of the brain because it was stuff that I had all learned before. I actually went back and looked at my undergrad notes and I compared it to my med school notes and I realized that literally everything I was learning in med school was exactly the same thing that I had learned in undergrad when I was sleeping through all my lectures. So yeah, take undergrad seriously. It's tough though, it is tough. I think that it does get easier each exam. However, I really think that one of the biggest advices I can give for the NB module is knowing the pathways. The different pathways for different systems, whether it's the cortical bulb or pathway or whatever, you need to know the pathway in your head. Now it was a little bit harder for my class because we actually got evacuated from Grenada in the middle of the NB1 module. And so we were on Zoom going forward and we weren't able to use whiteboards to pretty much draw out the pathways like we would use during the exam. So a lot of the things that we could normally draw out during the exam and help us find an answer, we weren't able to do that because of obviously security purposes during the exam. That's what made the exam really, really hard and stressful. I honestly can't give too much advice about the NB1 exam and the NB2 exam because like I said, we were literally in the middle of being evacuated and I was so stressed because I literally had to move from Grenada back to Georgia within a week, unpack and get resettled and just mentally that was just a lot. But I can speak for the NB3 module because at that point things had settled down and I was getting back into a routine. I think that module is taught very, very well. The NB3 is when you're getting more into psych evaluations and being able to diagnose different psychiatric disorders. There's a lot of different type of symptoms that go with each disorder and there's certain numbers. You need three symptoms for this or two symptoms for that and you can get kind of like a lot. But I think one of the greatest ways that I learned to memorize all the symptoms and all the numbers was being able to really, really focus on lecture notes. This was one module that I didn't really whiteboard. I didn't use too many outside resources and I really just focused purely on the lecture notes and practice questions. With that being said, you have to understand that every single module and every single term is a little bit different. You have to tweak and adjust. You may not be able to keep yourself in one type of study routine or one type of study resources. There's different things that you may have to use for every single module and that's okay. It's okay to be able to adjust and that's part of medical school and part of developing and growing academically. Approaching a new hurdle every single time and being able to see and evaluate how you can overcome it. So over Overall, I just have a few tips that can probably help you even if you don't want to use the specific resources that I mentioned before. One, always do practice questions. Practice questions, practice questions. Practice questions are literally the golden ticket to everything. I mean like there's actually a statistical report that those who perform highest on step exam do about 2,000 plus practice questions. I think that's a thing. I think that's actually like a, like a statistical report. I just know that practice questions is one of the best ways to evaluate whether or not you know something. Now, don't go doing practice questions if you haven't studied because you're not, you're not gonna know nothing. But when you feel like you have studied, practice questions are a way to really tweak those any bitty slides that you may have looked at a thousand times but never really, like, it never really sunk in with you. It's an absolutely necessary way to just honestly solidify your information. It gets you in that test mode. It can be kind of daunting because I know for me sometimes when I feel like I don't know something, I'm like, oh, I don't wanna do practice questions because because I don't wanna get them wrong. However, I've learned that it's one, better to get things wrong while you're doing practice questions on your own than to get them wrong on the exam. Two, when you get them right, it's kinda of like a little confidence booter, like, oh yeah, you know. I'm getting these right, you know? And depending on the modules, there's so many different resources that SGU has for getting practice questions. The DES groups that are on Facebook are such a great, great way to get practice questions. Redoing your IMCQs, redoing your weekly quizzes are all really great resources to really solidify your knowledge. Tip number two, 
don't get too behind. So the reason I say you don't wanna get too behind is because term two is when you're gonna take your first BSCE exam. And a BSCE exam is basically an accumulation of all the material you learn from term one and term two. That's one year full of material. And so that's a lot of information. And you don't really get too much time to study for that. So you kind of have to incorporate that in your regular studying for your regular exams in term two. And so if you're behind in your term two exams and you're getting behind studying, it's gonna be really hard to also on top of that to put on BSCE studying as well. So you really, really wanna stay organized, proactive, and try your best to not procrastinate. My third advice is to also not get discouraged if you have one or two exams that didn't go as well. Yes, you do have to read a certain average in order to go on to the next term. However, I think that the weight of how hard the exams really do balance themselves out. If you don't do well on one, that's not the end all or be all. You can still make it up on the other exams. My first exam was not that great at all. My second exam was absolutely amazing. My third exam wasn't that great at all. The last two exams were great. So I was really able to make up those two lower exams with the other three and I still ended up doing really well in the term. So just know that even if you feel like one exam maybe didn't go as planned and you had like a bad module, it's not the end of the world. You can still make it up if you try and seek help in the beginning. Find out what went wrong. Was it because you were just really maybe unmotivated in the beginning and it was hard to readjust and come back to studying? Was it because you were burnt out at the end? Or was it because you just didn't really grasp the material? Always try to reevaluate. Even if you did well, reevaluate what went right and what went wrong so that you can know how to incorporate that in the next few exams. And lastly, with the BSCE setting, like I said before, you wanna make sure that you're incorporating studying very, very early. I was planning on starting to study in March, um, but then COVID hit and um, all that happened. Things got really haywire and I really started studying for BSE pretty late. If I were to go back in time, I honestly would have started studying probably in February and just did like 30 minutes every single day. And then on the weekends, closer to the exam, I would do maybe an hour or two hours. Remind yourself that this is stuff that you already learned before. So you don't have to spend too much time with it, but make sure that you're doing what you can to set yourself up so that you can do well on the exam. So I really hope that these tips can help you guys. I hope that it can maybe even give some motivation for those who are going into term two. Please like and subscribe and comment below if you have any questions and stay tuned for more videos. Bye guys.